Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, yes. I have Edwin Otero here with me today on the keyboard. Thank you so much, Edwin. We're going to lift up worship together. So there in your home or in your car or wherever you are, just follow us. Right into his throne room. Right into your throne room, O oh Lord. Moshe la ma so na ma ka Aleva bo se la 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 mo ko ri ri a sa Pe he a most hai Hele he mo no na ka se te sho Draw us in, O Lord, draw us in, O Lord Oh, we need you, we need you, Lord you're our source of life. Oh, as we breathe back to you, oh God, with our worship, breathe your breath of life into us, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Uh, welcome to Throne Room Prayer. We're so pleased that so many of you are signing up to become intercessors with Throne Room Prayer. We desire to network around the world with you. And we're hoping to be able to connect you from dot to dot, from not only nation to nation, but in your nation. Discover new prayer ministries that you can connect with until we have this whole globe completely connected. 24-7 will be realized because of all the different time zones, so we can truly have 24-7 worship all around the world. Oh, the thought just gets me all excited. Well, today I wanted to teach on the altars. It's so important to realize how, how important it is with God, the altars. He brought Abraham uh, from Ur of Chaldee into the promised land and the first place that God communicated with Abraham there was an altar built and so when we go through Genesis and through the Old Testament we see that there were all, often altars built there were false altars that when God came in and and, uh, and and took over a region then all of those those false idols and altars were torn up but the altar of the Lord is so important. And when we read about the tabernacle of Moses and there was a piece of furniture that was called the brazen altar, or the brass altar that sat out in the courtyard as you just came in uh, through the gate. And what uh, that was for was to burn the sacrifices. And so when it was completed, this was said in Leviticus the 6th through the 13th, 613, excuse me got to make sure my glasses are working. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. And so the Lord also, we need to see that this is personal too. We are altars. And there's a fire burning upon our altar that's never to go out. Day or night, we need to have that fire burning. Remember, we can have fellowship and we can have communication with the Lord 24-7. What an awesome, awesome thing that is. And so we remember that the fire always comes from God. When the fire was lit on that altar, the fire came down from God. And that will remind us then of the incident with Elijah. Remember when Elijah was in a, a big mess with the, with the prophets of Baal and they were having a standoff. And, and so he built an altar and he, uh, he repaired it and he, and he dug a ditch around it and put all kinds of water, put lots of water in it and they were in the middle of a drought. And meanwhile, the prophets of Baal are trying to, or Baal, depending on where, how you pronounce it, they were, they were in a contest with him and uh, he said, he, he told them, you know, is he, is, he, is he asleep? Is Baal asleep? What's going on here? And they were cutting themselves and all that. 
And when the time of the evening sacrifice, and we find, uh, and I do a lot of, of, of teaching on the morning and the evening sacrifice, but at the time of the evening sacrifice, all of the altar was prepared, the water was, had filled the ditch, and everything was ready. And then the fire came down from heaven and lit that altar, lit the wood, burned up all the wood, licked up all the water that was in the ditch. And he had said to the children of Israel, if we, this is, this is the day that the Lord says, are you with me or are you against me? Whoever's, for, whoever's God is God is the fire that's going to come down from heaven. And so God proved who he was. And that turned Israel back to the Lord. Now I want to, to tell you, that altars are being built all around the world. Wherever you spend time with God, wherever you, and, and you need to have a specific place, I believe, in your home or, or your, however, however is the best way for you. But you need to build an altar. I'm, I'm from the old school, so we used to call them family altars. We can still call them that. So just take a place, find a place that you can bring your family together or yourself if you're, if you're alone, and you just spend time with God, reading His Word, praying His Word, worshiping Him, spend time in His presence, and that altar will be built, and you want to keep the fire on it all, always because it's never supposed to go out. We have a great guest today, but before we go to our guest, I want you to watch this and see how you could sign up to become a member of Throne Room Prayer as an intercessor. Are you an intercessor? Join the Throne Room Prayer Intercessor Network to be a part of a global prayer initiative. Together we will impact the nations through prayer. By signing up online, you will gain access to several teachings from Lila Tahoon, videos, articles, and an exclusive Facebook intercessor group. For more information, visit god.tv slash trp and become a God TV intercessor today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the teaching. And I have a wonderful guest that I want to introduce you to, Jerry Murphy from Mariah Ranch. And Jerry, it's a pleasure to have you here today. So good to be here. Delilah. Yeah, I've missed you, buddy. <laughs> okay, I, I really want to hear what God's doing. I know he's really been moving powerfully in your region uh, of Poplar Bluff. And so I have actually, you know, I have a great memory, but it's very short. So I've written down some questions here. Uh, I want you to share your journey. Well, you know, it started some years ago with... Uh, uh, the meeting of some dear friends of ours, uh, Dick and Deanne Rubin, and, and that was such a great time. And uh, out on the ranch, we started off with a prayer gathering out on the ranch. We didn't know what it was going to end up being, but it developed into a prayer altar yeah. on the ranch that we've established. And, and God has had us on an incredible journey. Yeah. Well, tell us how, uh, how you came about building an altar. Well, we just felt like that we needed a uh, a place to just dedicate to God. Besides, we had dedicated the ranch to Him, of course. But and, well, tell me about your ranch. What how, what size it is? And... It's just a a small working cattle ranch, mm -hmm. cow calf operation. Yeah. It's just it's something that's one of my passions. Ah. I just love cattle and raising cattle and growing grass for the cattle to eat. And so, it's a place that uh, out in the open, and so I can. I love to walk and just walking around the ranch and the trails and the paths and worship and to pray. And so uh, we established the prayer altar that we actually built a rock altar mm -hmm. out on the ranch and ended up with a pit in the front of it where we put a fire. Wow. And uh, as you know, you've been there. And I have, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And we, uh, we, we burn a, a fire and praise and worship and yeah. prayer and and so we've been uh, we've been continuing now to do that. Now you had a continuous uh, fire burning for a while, didn't you? Yes, the Tell Lord uh, the Lord spoke to me uh, uh, in the fall of a couple of years ago and he said to 
build a fire and not let it go out. Ah. And so I built the fire, and he told me he told me that he would tell me when I could quit doing it. Well, days went by, weeks went by, yeah, months went by. Wow. And uh, uh, actually, 222 days 222 went by. 222 days. 222 days went by. Uh, before he told me I could allow the fire to go out. Wow. Now during that time, that was all winter long. It started Ooh. in the fall, went all the way through spring. Yeah. And everywhere I went, people knew when I walked in the room because I smelled like smoke. <laughs> because every four to five hours, I was up there at the prayer altar loading on wood day on the night. fire, day, day and night. night. Wow. And it was an amazing time. Yeah, so what do you think was accomplished during that time, Jerry? Well, I think a lot of intercession was done, and, and uh, we met a, a couple that would, during the same time mm -hmm. that I was going through burning that fire, wow. they were going through a terrible time in their life with their children with a uh, terminal illness. Oh, my. And uh, God did heal their children. Wow. And, uh, and restored them to perfect health. Wow. But it was during that time that we were burning that fire that they were told to take their children home. And you didn't know them. And, and I they never didn't know knew, you? I did not know them wow. or know anything about it. Wow. But last fall, they came to the ranch at a conference that we had, mm. and the Lord had revealed to him uh, that this was where the intercession Whew. had took place wow. for their children. For the and, healing. And the the Lord had, had given him a scripture. It was uh, Genesis 22, 2. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. Yes. So, so what, it, was the, what was the nature of the illness? It was a rare liver disease that was genetic. And both And children? both of their boys had it. Wow. And, uh, and you must have their family on the show sometime. There, it's an oh, amazing it testimony. Exciting. Sounds exciting. But, uh, uh, it was amazing to me the fact that I actually got to meet them and the Lord was having me intercessing for them and I didn't even know it. Yeah. So that's the importance of a prayer altar and right. establishing a place where we can seek God. Right. He'll meet us if we seek Him. He will. Yeah, he will. I know I've, I came to your, uh, what, how many hour prayer meeting did we have there at your place? Uh, that was a 44 hour. 44 hour. And aren't you planning on having? We're doing another one. We Every year around the National Day of Prayer, we'll do uh, 44 hours. This year we're doing 77 hours. 77 hours. We're starting with the midnight cry, and right. then we're going to uh, uh, conclude with the sunrise ah. type service. But it will be continuous prayer, wow. praise, and worship. And so and people will be coming from everywhere? Every, it'll be out there on the website. We have no idea. We just invite the world and, yeah. and we'll see what happens. But well, didn't you have something like that happen when you put a tent up a few years ago? Yes, <laughs> we did. We had people showed up from like 32 states and six nations. It and was it was an over a thousand people that it, showed up. Huh? It was an incredible time. Yeah. How did you really discover prayer altars? I mean, what, what was the, uh, the catalyst? I, I would say the catalyst for prayer altars was a conversation that I had with a lady by the name of Lila. And she started telling me about, you know, the first conversation that we had I was do on remember a that. phone call with the Rubens about mapping and the significance of yeah. prayer and intercession. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I said, we've got to have a place mm -hmm. that when logic is screaming no, uh -huh. Faith in the Holy Spirit is whispering yes. Yeah. So we have to have a place that we can go to that we can hear from God. Wow. And it's dedicated for that. Mm -hmm. And that we can actually hear from God and not without all the interference and the noise from yeah. the world. Yeah, well, it is a beautiful place. Your your ranch is lovely. And I know there's more than that, uh, more than the altar on your ranch that's going on. There's something always going on there. Well, we believe there's outpouring going around this nation. There's yeah. hubs of habitation. and Absolutely. Uh, uh, a group of people that have been actually in an outpouring for seven or eight years now up in Terre Haute, Indiana, uh -huh. and uh, we've been connected with them. Praise it's the time Lord. for the church, the five-fold ministry, to start com functioning right. in its function. And putting our walls down, tearing our walls down that yes. separates us. We need all the streams to run together. Jerry, I believe that with my whole heart. Now, I know, Jerry, that because uh, in the next session, I'm going to have you on a, another session today. 
And uh, I want to, because you're a marketplace, mm -hmm. being out on the farm and raising cows is not all that you do. No. But we'll get into that in the, sec in the next session. But I know that there have been a lot of things that have happened there on the ranch. You want to share something that comes to your mind right now that Oh, where would I start? I, well, just start. <laughs> I, I, I know having you come to the ranch and uh -huh. and uh, and the and the people that have came there. It's it's all about the people that have come and the of connections course. and the relationships and what they deposit. Yes, what what they have put in and how it's changed our life. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I used to be pretty full of myself, and I still have to deal with that. Oh, I think you're. All, I think you're alone in that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't think you know, anybody else has people, that problem. I, I tell people all the time. Uh, people deal with fear and lust and mm -hmm. anger and pride, and, mm -hmm. and and most all of us will deal with all of them. Usually, two more than the other. Yeah. And and so we have to work on that. So that's why we need a place that we can get with God. Yeah, you know, Jerry, I love your one-liners. And uh, we last time we were talking, you were you were saying something about flap. Well, yeah. That's an acronym for something. So yeah, go that's ahead and the share acronym. that. Flap I think we all a, need that. If flap is an acronym for fear, lust, anger, and pride. Oh. <laughs> We're going to deal with those, and so we need to be always working on getting the flap out of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Jerry. Oh. So what uh, what do you see in the future there for Mariah Ranch? Well, I see uh, a move of God in this country like we've never seen before. Amen. I see an acceleration to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a fire, a fire that's going to burn across this land. And yeah. uh, I, I, I just see God moving in a way. But He just needs vessels to move through. Sure He does. Sure and he does. so we're just trying to be obedient. Yeah. and not miss anything that he says to mm -hmm. do. And some of the stuff he tells us, not very logical. Yeah. But that's kind of what I've decided is the way I know it's God. <laughs> because if it makes sense to me, it may not be him. It's that's just right. me. That's right. We're just too logical, aren't we? Yes. You know, Jerry, uh, I think that we are in for the greatest move of God that the world has ever seen. I believe that. What would happen if people began to build personal altars? All, I'm not suggesting that they burn their house down or anything like that, uh, or get the barbecue out in the backyard. But uh, spiritually speaking, having the fire on your personal altar and then just making a place in your home or your place of business or school or wherever you are uh, to be able to build an altar, a place that's just for him. And then begin to put the fire on it, or put yeah. the put the wood on it, and he'll light the fire. It's the beginning of where transformation begins. Ah, yes. Is we dedicate everything that we have to the Lord, and mm -hmm. we designate mm -hmm. a place. Right. When we dedicate, and then designate, mm -hmm. and then. We are deliberate about what we do. Uh -huh. We recognize the prayer altar, whether it's in your business, mm -hmm. whether it's in your home with your family, mm -hmm. even in your community. Yeah. I often go to the city limit signs of my city. Uh huh. And and do a logical thing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> and, and say, you know, I'm claiming this city for the absolutely, Lord. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, if we could have our guests, our guests, our viewers really get a hold of this and begin to do the same thing in their city, uh, I think there'd be tremendous results. I know you've told me so many different things that have happened out there at the ranch, and I've seen things happen. Yes. I've seen the development of worship uh, with your worship team. And I remember uh, we were going to do some live streaming, and uh, this was kind of your first venture on that. And then you said, okay, I'm going to get this all set. Well, next time I come, you got fiber optics, you got all the... <laughs> I have a tendency that when God says to do it, I want to pull all the strings and get it done. I know it. Done, it so. I know it. And that's what's so great about you, Jerry. And so I wonder, uh, what do you think, like I said, do you think is going to happen at the ranch during that prayer time that you're designating? Well, I think we're going to just see God move in a way within the people that come and that they feel that shalom, peace of God. There's yeah. a presence there. You know, there you've is, been there. Very much so. And, and you feel it when you hit the hit the property that's true and and you just immerse yourself in yeah. that in such a way that it just consumes you mm -hmm. and so that's where that fire starts to burn all the stuff out of us that doesn't need to be there. right and uh you're open for anybody to come to the prayer meeting absolutely <laughs> absolutely anybody Did I hear can that come. an open invitation <laughs> open invitation mariah ranch the gates open <laughs> 
Well, thank you very much, Jerry. This has been a wonderful session. And uh, I thank you for being with us. Now we're going to go to worship. But before we do, I want you to look at this. Are you an intercessor? Join the Throne Room Prayer Intercessor Network to be a part of a global prayer initiative. Together we will impact the nations through prayer. By signing up online, you will gain access to several teachings from Lila Tahoon, videos, articles, and an exclusive Facebook intercessor group. For more information, visit god.tv slash trp and become a God TV intercessor today. Ascend, O oh Lord. Let the smoke of your presence ascend, O oh Lord. Oh. oh, let the smoke of your presence ascend, O oh Lord. Let the smoke of your presence ascend, O oh Lord. Oh, let the smoke of your presence ascend, O oh Lord. Oh, off of my altar, Lord, I ask you to, to give me a brand new fire, deeper fire. Lord, I ask you to blow upon the coals that it will be ignited, O oh God, and to a flaming passion. Join in with us, join in with us, wherever you are, join in with us. Let him blow upon, oh, the coals in your heart, ignite. Ignite flames of passion for him. Oh, it'll break off all of the discouragement. Oh, when we realize how big he is, how grand he is, whatever we're experiencing is nothing compared to the grandeur of our God. Draw us in, Lord, draw us in, Lord. Bring us into that place with you. Lord, dispel the darkness. Dispel the darkness. Oh, bring your light, oh God. Oh, the light from heaven, Lord. The light from heaven, Lord. Bring your light, oh Lord. Accept our sacrifice. May the smoke, may the smoke, Alamashan, off of the altar, oh God, ascend to your throne as a sweet savor, as a sweet savor. Bosho, pleasing to you, oh God. Pleasing to you. May our sacrifice of worship and praise be pleasing to you, O oh God. Be pleasing to you. Hello, 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 hello,
Oh, let the worship from around the world be a symphony. Oh, a symphony, a symphony, a symphony. Bishela Ramakora Masa, Mandala Mako, Mama Masi, Didioko. Bishela Maso, Bishela Maso. And emete, our hearts cry out for you, O God. Our hearts cry out for you, O God. Bishela Maso, Lemono Nakate Sondoro Mako, Bishela. Ramanda da da bako shalama se, bandele andora maki, maki di di aso la mako, amasha na na ne mi aso, ala moto na masi, anda la moto na masi, beche, o sanda la makonde di di biaka na na mi asi na makia, yes. Let the fire on your altar continue to burn bright and beautiful and full of passion. And so I thank you for being with us today. And I say goodbye for right now. We'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you for watching Throne Room Prayer. We look forward to seeing you again soon. To join the Throne Room Intercessor Network, and gain access to exclusive articles, videos, teachings, and an exclusive Facebook intercessor group, visit god.tv forward slash trp.